how much water do you really need to drink? Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Mike, and we're looking at the truths about wellness trends. And today we're gonna to explore water intake. How much do you really need to drink and what are the actual facts out there? Water is obviously a crucial component to our bodies. In fact, it makes up the majority of our bodies, our blood, our organs, all of that needs water to function. So yes, we absolutely do need water, but the myths that have been propagating for years about how much water we have to have may be slightly inaccurate. Patients often come into my office and ask, how can you tell if I'm dehydrated? Or I'm drinking eight glasses of water a day. Is that enough for my body? There's usually an answer to that, but it's not by the amount of glasses. It's by something else, pee. <laughs> I just wanted you to pop up on screen a giant pee. <laughs> Drinking more water is often said to be the answer for everything. What amazing benefits await for you if you drink more? Will you be more energized, less hungry, have clearer skin, have better bowel movements? But how much do you really need to drink? Is eight glasses of water a day really the goal for everyone? Patients oftentimes come in with the preconceived notion that they're supposed to be drinking six or eight cups of water a day. Many times I find them to be either overhydrated or underhydrated, depending on their body type, their activities that they're performing. What's most important for patients is to figure out if they're dehydrated, what is actually happening? And once we put that whole picture together, then that's when I'm able to give the best advice. Dangers of dehydration are wide and they vary person to person. Someone may experience confusion. Someone might have a decreased appetite. Someone might have decreased metabolism. You're staying hydrated, not only for your mental sake, but also for your physical sake. It's truly an important factor in your health. Drinking eight glasses of water a day is commonly heard wellness wisdom nowadays, but it's also becoming trendier to measure your hydration with things like apps that remind you to stay hydrated and water bottles that track your progress. I like when patients take initiative and put a focused effort to make sure that they're well hydrated. But when you cross that line and it becomes something that causes anxiety in your mind, that could actually do more harm than good. So what I always recommend to my patients is stay alert about your hydration status. Don't become anxious. We've all heard the advice to drink eight glasses of eight ounces of water a day, but where does that come from? A minimum water requirement seems to have first been established in 1945 when the Food and Nutrition Board of the National Academy of Sciences published their dietary guidelines. Later, Frederick John Stair, a nutritionist, co-authored a book where he suggested drinking at least six glasses of water a day. Water content is extremely important for the human body. As a family medicine doctor, when we have a patient admitted onto our wards, we would constantly be calculating maintenance fluid it's trying to make up for losses that the patient may have had. When a human being is sick, they're actually requiring more water intake than the average human that's healthy. Now imagine you're at home and you wanna learn more about how much water you should be drinking. One of the first steps you may take is to visit Google and see what you find online. This is a preliminary first step, and the only reason you should be doing this is to further a better conversation with your doctor. This is what happens when you Google, how much water should I drink? We have 701 million results. That's a lot of water. I hope most of it is clean. One section that comes up is people also ask. I tend to recommend to my patients that we shouldn't be making calculations based on weight. The only time we do this is in a hospital setting when we're trying to calculate maintenance fluids for a patient. Otherwise, your kidneys do a great job of managing that and you should really drink based on what your body requires. Think about if you're thirsty, think about what your urine looks like and then make some educated decisions from there. I think this question stems from the fact that people are calculating their BMIs and then deciding whether or not they should be drinking more water because of that. Personally, I don't think height plays a role here. If you are heavier, you probably will need to take in more water, but I don't see how height falls into this calculation. I would encourage to not measure the amount of water you're drinking by ounces. I think you should figure out what your body needs based on how you feel, what your mind tells you, and when we look down in that toilet and we see our color of our urine, but more on that later. A gallon of water a day is not that much water. So I think that would be pretty reasonable. It obviously depends on who you are as a person, the activity level of the things you're doing. So I guess to each their own. This is a Google Trends graph of how much water do I need? As my patients have become more interested in their health, they've realized that staying hydrated is a critical component of not only staying healthy, but of performance. So they've certainly been asking more and more questions on the subject. How much water do you really need to drink per day? The Institute of Medicine actually recommends that women get 2.7 liters of water per day. That's 11 cups. But here's the thing, 
They don't say you need to drink 11 cups of water a day. It's very often that folks underestimate how much water and hydration they're consuming because they don't realize in foods like fruits, there's actually a significant amount of water content. Think of watermelons. They have a significant amount of water that does hydrate you. So exactly how much water do you need to drink per day depends on several factors like your age, sex, your diet, activity level, and your lifestyle. The most important thing we need to think about when we're deciding our hydration status is our activity level. If you're exercising in a very hot environment, you're gonna need significantly more water to make up for the losses that you're experiencing being in a heated environment. How can you tell if you're hydrated enough? Well, if you're thirsty, your body's telling you that you need more water. Another good clue, the color of your urine. Your kidneys are actually the organs that are responsible for controlling the color of the urine. One of the waste products your body creates is called urea, and your kidneys release urea throughout the day. Now, when you're well hydrated, your urine looks clear or maybe pale yellow. But when you're dehydrated and your kidneys are actively trying to hold on to as much fluid as possible, it's gonna look quite dark. Now, if your urine has suddenly changed colors and you've tried being more hydrated and it's not going back to normal, perhaps that's a good reason for you to go see your doctor. So, what can more water do for you? Being properly hydrated can definitely affect your mood, your energy levels, and your skin's moisture, but it's not gonna be a magic bullet. By that, we mean that you can't just chug a bunch of water one day and expect immediate results. Just keep in mind that you wanna stay hydrated as a baseline way of staying well. And if you're experiencing things like hunger or headaches that are caused by dehydration, having more water can certainly help with that. People have all sorts of questions when it comes to water. Let's field some of them. Hey, Dr. Mike, do I have to drink more water if I'm pregnant? You should be drinking more water when you're pregnant as that's a physically demanding state for your body. Anytime you're doing anything where it increases your physical demand, you're gonna need more water intake. Hey, Dr. Mike, everybody tells me coconut water is more hydrating than regular water. How can that be true? There are substances that are more hydrating than water because hydration requires water and electrolytes. Again, if you need specific medical advice, my recommendation is to always go and speak with your doctor first. If you're interested in trying out some of the tech that will help you stay well hydrated, I'm perfectly fine with that. However, you should know that humans have survived thousands of years without any kind of tech because they know when to drink. Our bodies have natural thirst mechanisms that will activate our body to know that we should have water. Now there's been this theory going around that once you're already thirsty, that's a sign you're dehydrated. Sure, that's true for a few percentage points, but you could still make that up rather quickly by having a simple glass of water. All of the benefits that I've talked about with water really stem from the fact that you're preventing dehydration. Once that's occurred, more is not gonna be better. But don't be afraid to have a sip. I'm Dr. Mike, and that's water intake. Mm. Oh, I gotta roll out. <laughs> Maybe that's a good ending. <laughs>